week on Geek Crash Course, we're doing something a little bit different. We're joined by the creators of Pioneer One on our Geek Crash Couch. I'm Diana DeKylo. I'm Michael Nixon. I'm Bracey Smith. I'm Josh Bernhardt. And this is Geek, Geek Crash, Crash Course. Course. Pioneer One. It's a TV show for the web. It's funded by fans and it's distributed on BitTorrent and Vodo. In the show, a Soviet space capsule falls to Earth on the Montana-Calgary border. Department of Homeland Security agents cross the border and secure the craft in quarantine. The conflict between countries becomes the background tension of the series. The deeper mystery begins when the capsule's occupant is revealed to have brought rocks from Mars with him. The occupant himself is also part of the larger story. Fun fact number one, the space helmet seen in the pilot has actually been to space. Here are the characters you need to know about to start watching Pioneer One. Tom Taylor works for the FBI and is the director of the Calgary crash site. He brings in Dr. Zachary Walzer, who's an expert on Mars and is supposedly there just to investigate the crash. Sophie Larson is a tough and sassy FBI agent that keeps Taylor in check. Secretary McClellan is a DHS Deputy Secretary, Taylor's boss, and he calls in from afar to keep Taylor and the whole shebang in check. Jane Campbell is a nurse brought in in Episode 3 to care for Yuri. Yuri is the mysterious Soviet cosmonaut of unknown origins whose fall to Earth starts the series. Fun fact number two, the spacesuit has not been to space, and is in fact an old painter's suit filled with empty water bottles. So instead of homework and avoid this week, we're going to ask the creators of Pioneer One themselves some questions. The first one is, how did you guys meet? Uh, we met in college. I used to run our local college television station, and uh, he produced a TV show called Nate Kemper, which was a very ambitious project back, back in the day. And, uh, and I thought it was fantastic, and we kind of met because of that. So how did you guys come up with the idea for Pioneer One, and who came up with what? And I don't know exactly where the idea came from, but someone who knows me well, who's known me for a long time, um, they heard me answer that saying, I don't know where the idea came from, and then they said, Josh, what are you talking about? Uh, but you've always been like a Cold War slash space program nerd. Like, I mean, this makes complete sense to everyone else where this came from. I was like, oh, I suppose that makes complete sense. Yeah. So what kind of research did you guys have to do? And actors, like the one that plays Dr. Walzer, did you have to give him a science lesson, or is he just reading a script? Oh, we did absolutely no research whatsoever. <laughs> <for this one. laughs> no, uh, uh, actually, Josh was very helpful as far as um, the research and a lot of the background checking, a lot of stuff. He did while he was writing the script, and he had, I mean, you no, we have, well, a lot of people. Well, I mean, a part of the, uh, uh, I, I guess what led to the idea was because, I mean, like I was saying before, like I'm a space nerd, I'm a Cold War nerd, so I mean, like, you know, you pick up these things along the way, but then they kind of coalesce into the, into this. So, uh, so, so I mean, I mean, a lot of the stuff, I only really had to do research on um, certain of the details. You know, I mean, the Walzer character was actually inspired by a real guy that is, um, by a guy named uh, Robert Zubrin, who, um, I mean, on, I mean, like on paper, like the fact sheet, if you put uh, uh, Zubrin and Walzer side by side, it would look, you know, kind of the same. But that's kind of where, like, the comparison is. Oh, he, he read the book on his own, yeah. He... But, I mean, yeah, he read uh, Bob Zubrin's uh, The Case for Mars, uh, which was, was really cool. So, because then he was like, now I understand what I'm saying in the script, but I'm saying this. But I thought that was really cool that he actually went out and he bought the book and he read the book and, um, but he, uh, uh, he educated himself, which I thought was awesome. To that extent. I mean, before that, we had hooked him up with, like, YouTube clips and, like, letting oh, him yeah. know who his character was based right. on and, that, like, to find out a little bit more about, about who he was. So, yeah. what's great about web television? Why web? What kind of freedoms and challenges do you experience working in that kind of medium? Well, I mean, uh, the freedoms, obviously, you have, you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to follow as close as possible the format of like a standard one-hour TV drama, um, uh, not really for necessarily a, a commercial reason, but because um, 
the the idea was to make a TV show, and that we wanted to make it along with all of the the conventions of uh, the format. So I mean, we have a commercial break. We didn't have to do that, but I mean, TV shows have commercials. But In general, just we wanted to make something that we wanted to watch ourselves. So, yeah, uh, I mean, as far as entertainment is concerned, I'm not really interested in short web series. I like, uh, I like informative web series, like when they're, when they're short and to the point. Like, like say, like, say Geek. What's the show? Yes, yes, Geek, geek Crash, Crash Course. Course. <laughs> um, oh, when it's more, like, fun information, that's what I like out of a web series. But as far as, like, a, a story arc and an involved, like, I want something longer mm. format of... Fun fact number three, the rocks from Mars seen in the pilot are actually not rocks, they are sponges used to paint the spacesuit. Cheers, buddy. Each week on Geek Crash Course, we ask an extra credit question. If you answer correctly on Twitter, Facebook, or our website, you could be our Geek of the Week. This week's Geek of the Week is Jason from New York, who correctly tweeted us the answer to last week's question. This week's extra credit question is, to what celestial body was the real Pioneer One probe sent? That's it, and thanks for watching this week's special episode of Geek Crash Course on Pioneer One. If you want to see the rest of our interview with Bracey and Josh, we're going to post it later this week. Till then, if you have any questions, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Geek Crash Course. Course.